Hi everybody, happy uh, happy Independence Day, post-Independence Day. Today we're doing Meet the Beatles, 1964, all right? Produced by George Martin and released on January 20th, 1964, just, uh, just before Beatlemania. Meet the Beatles has 24 songs and it's 55 minutes. This version, um, this version has both stereo and mono, and I'll talk about that at the end. And threw up, but mainly at the end. Um, so 24 songs, 55 minutes, or 12 songs, 22 and a half minutes. Some of them are stereo, and you know the rest of them are mono. Okay. Um, the cover. The cover is uh, the Beatles cover from With the Beatles. Except that it has like a blue, a bluish tint on it. Where if you saw the With the Beatles one, it doesn't have this blue... Uh, tint on it, but this is an iconic photo. You got the four boys here. Um, let me see if I can call them out. That's John. That's Paul. That's Ringo. So that must be George in the middle. Okay. And then on the back, um, you know, I would imagine this is what the vinyl was like if you'd have bought the vinyl sleeve back in 1964 or any time in the 60s. Uh, <clears throat> but it's got all the songs and listed, and then it's got another picture of the band right here. The Four Boys, and I got this as part of the, the Beatles Capitol Records Volume 1, which came out uh, right around, two, I'm going to like say 2004. Let's see if it says on here. Yeah, 2004 is when I got it, and it's got all the, it's got all the uh, 1964 albums on it. Okay, so what about this album? Um, the Beatles spent uh, years in Germany, okay? Um, and let me read this. I pulled this from Wiki. The original lineup of the Beatles, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, Stuart Sutcliffe, and Pete Best regularly performed at different clubs in Hamburg or Hamburg, West Germany during the period 1960 to December 1962. In 1963, they recorded the debut album, Please Please Me, and then with the Beatles. Okay. And, uh, See, there are differences in the UK and US markets that prompted EMI and Capitol Records to release them differently. Um, in the US market, the um, the album, the consumers used to getting the singles and the and the B sides right on the right on the record. Okay, that's not the way it is in the UK and the rest of the world. In the UK, uh, the common practice was um, the Beatles cut ten or twelve songs. That goes on the album, and then they made like six other songs, and those were A-sides and B-sides of singles, and that's how they got released. They got trickled out over time. And so that was a substantial market difference. Um, and in the United States, the Capitol Records executives decided to milk the U.S. market for as many albums as they could um, get away with because people didn't buy singles, so just like let's try to make a bunch of albums. Um, and so what happened is many times you're breaking up albums like the Beatles 65, Rubber Soul, Beatles 5, those are good examples of um, adding singles and A-sides to sell more albums and stripping apart the way the UK album was released. And that's exactly what they did here. And by the way, when the Beatles found out about it, they were pissed off. Okay, They were pissed off when they found out Meet the Beatles was different from uh, With the Beatles. Now, um, <clears throat> This review is, this is uh, Meet the Beatles, so this is the USA or Canada's uh, Meet the Beatles by Capitol Records, and it's not the UK global counterpart with the Beatles, which has, it says with the Beatles, and it has, doesn't have the blue tint. The difference is, quickly, the first three tracks on the album um, are the single, I Want to Hold Your Hand, I Saw Her Standing There, is the B-side to I Want to Hold Your Hand in the United States. Okay, so that's the first two tracks here. And then this boy is the UK B-side for the same song, I Want to Hold Your Hand, from the original November 1963 release of I Want to Hold Your Hand. Okay, so those are the main differences. The rest is all the same. Okay. The other albums, by the way, not so much. We'll break those down individually when we get there. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else do I want to say? Oh, Introducing the Beatles was the very first United States release by VJ Records in 1963, but it didn't sell in America. It kind of flopped. 
And, you know, the Beatles were always like, oh, we're not going to America until we get a hit in America. And so this was like their first hit. It just caught and then they came um, and they did the, uh, uh, the Ed Sullivan show. Um, so everything is really screwed up at the beginning and they got back on track quickly with this record. And uh, uh, last thing I'll say is this is pop. It's, uh, it's not schmupsy or schmaltzy like Mariah Cara. It's just good bubblegum pop, and it's 22 and a half minutes of pop. I mean, what? Uh, it's easy to listen to. And so with that, let's just get into the track-by-track track analysis. Okay, track number one is I Want to Hold Your Hand. It's 2 minutes and 24 seconds. That's typical. And John Lennon's on lead vocals, and this is the first Beatles hit in the United States. And... Um, uh, you all know the song. What's uh, just listening back to it, the clapping, the I mean, that adds a lot to the texture of the song, and um, that's that's pretty much the song. The song is its verse. The verses are eight bars. That's when John Lennon singing, "Oh yeah, I tell you something," and then the chorus is four bars. Are I want to hold your hand, and then the bridge is eight bars of, and when I touch you. That's the bridge. The song's in the key of G major, and it's 138 beats per minute, and it's in 4-4 time. And if you haven't heard it by now, you uh, you missed the boat on something. It's a uh, very, very traditional song structure, uh, but not as traditional as the record that came in 1963, so um, introducing the Beatles. Um, I Want to Hold Your Hand is a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus. That's the song. And like I said, if you don't know the song, you um, you miss the you you miss something. I don't know. Okay, I uh, track number two. I saw her standing there. Is two minutes and fifty seconds. It's a Paul McCartney song. I don't think I need to get into what he's singing about. He's singing about a girl, and um, this song also has the same kind of hand clapping to the same um, a similar syncopation. The verse is 16 bars. That's when Paul McCartney sings, um, Oh, we dance through the night. And we, okay, that's the verse. It's it's a little bit different in the verses, but um, you get the point. The bridge is eight bars, um, plus a couple of extended bars that they needed just to make it fit properly, um, just to hold the notes. Um, and that's the bridge is when he's singing, um, well, my heart went boom when I crossed the room. That's the verse. Uh, sorry, that's the bridge. <clears throat> and then there's a, a, a pretty good guitar solo of 16 bars by George Harrison. Nothing too elaborate. Um, it's just pretty straight up George Harrison guitar solo. This song is in the key of E major and 160 beats per minute, and it's also in 4-4 time. And the song structure is, once again, very, the most simple for the Beatles. Verse, verse, bridge, verse, guitar solo, bridge, verse, outro. And that's sort of like in line with the 1963 album. Um, let's move on, shall we? The third track on Meet the Beatles is this boy, 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Uh, it's a John Lennon song, sounds like a John Lennon song, and... Um, he's definitely lead on the bridge, lead vocals, and he's singing with Paul and George with vocal harmony in the verse. The verse is 12 bars, <clears throat> excuse me, and he's singing, this boy wouldn't mind the pain, okay? And then the bridge is eight bars in 4-4 four, four time, and, um, by the way, this is a weird song to count to, so the verse and the bridge has a, um, the verse is in 12-8, and, uh, the bridge is in 4-4. Four, four. So it's a weird song to count out, especially the bridge. It's in the key of D major, and it's 45 beats per minute, so a very slow tempo. And that 12-8, it feels more like a waltz, like a 3-4. Um, because think about it, 8, um, eight time is the eighth, eighth note gets one beat, and there are 12 eighth notes in a measure. So you're, you're not really counting... <clears throat> I mean, I guess you can if you want to, but 
at 54 beats per minute, you're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and that's a measure. That's weird, uh, but it, it feels more like a da, 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 you know, kind of tempo. It's a verse, verse, bridge, verse, outro. <laughs> that's, the, that's the song. Uh, track four is It Won't Be Long, 2 minutes and 11 seconds. Um, once again, John Lennon on lead. Um, and by the way, if you don't know, whoever's singing the lead vocal generally wrote the song. And on this album, it's John. Um, and whoever, um, in the songs that Paul wrote, especially in the early days, John usually was helping. You know, All the songs are credited to uh, Lennon-McCartney, even the ones that McCartney wrote and even the ones that Lennon wrote. With the exception of, you know, George Harrison has a song. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but the, Lennon's on lead and another boy band love song. Um, I kind of like the song. The, the chorus is eight bars and he's just going, it won't be long, yeah, yeah. And then the verse is eight bars every night when everybody, every night when everybody has fun. That's how it goes. And the bridge is eight bars, and um, so when you left me, woo! I like the drumming on the bridge, actually. Actually, this is uh, this song is awesome. It's probably um, the bridge is the best part, and it might be my favorite song on the album. Um, it won't be long by John Lennon. Key of C sharp minor. And uh, 140 beats per minute at 4-4 four, four time. And the song tr structure, uh, uh, different from the other ones, but um, still really simple. I mean, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, out. And that's the song. Um, track five, all I've got to do is two minutes and five seconds <laughs> these are all about two minutes um john lennon again john lennon is the man okay uh the verse is 10 bars and that's when he's singing whenever i want you around yeah and then the bridge is eight bars and um he's singing and the same goes for me whenever you want me at all you just gotta call on me um, key of C minor, C sharp minor, sorry, and then um, 100 beats per minute, 4-4 four, four time. This is a verse, verse, bridge, verse, bridge. <laughs> it's just really simple, uh, nothing too complicated, nothing elaborate, but actually revolutionary for the time. Um, track 6, All My Loving, 2 minutes and 4 seconds, we're back to Paul McCartney. So this is a Paul McCartney song. And you can kind of tell the verse is 16 bars and he's singing that's the verses. I'll pretend that I'm missing the lips I've been kissing. And then the chorus is eight bars. All my love in, I will send to you. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. And then the guitar solo is eight bars, but a dump dump. And it's a George Harrison. It's a, got a real country twang to it. Um, the guitar solo, not the whole song, but the guitar solo does. It's a key of E major and 140 beats per minute and 4-4 four, four time. And the song structure is a verse, verse, chorus, the guitar solo, and a, a verse, chorus. <laughs> That's the song. Let's get on with it. Track 7 is Don't Bother Me, 2 minutes and 28 seconds. George Harrison song, and he's singing lead. Um... Ba ba, ba ba da da, ba, I'm gonna screw it up. Ba ba da da, ba ba da ba, something like that. It's a um, verse twenty four um, bars, and this is when he's singing. Since she's been gone, da 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 da. da. I don't want to talk to no, you know. Don't bother. Me. Okay, and then the chorus is sixteen bars. Uh, but till she's here, please don't come near, please stay away. Ba -da -ba. 
bop, ba da ba. That's kind of the rhythm of the whole song, you know. And then the refrain is 12 bars. I've got no time for you right now. Don't bother me. Da 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 da. Uh, guitar solo is eight bars, and it's another kind of um, just a regular one. Uh, key of D major, 84 beats per minute, and it's in cut time. So, uh, like, like half, like one, two, one, you know, not four, four, but cut time. And it's a verse, chorus, refrain, guitar solo, refrain, chorus, refrain, outro. So this one's different, and George has a different spin on his song structure than the others. And I'm going to say that's probably my second favorite song uh maybe oh maybe it is uh, i'll i'll put that one number two okay track eight is little child 146 it's a quick one and we're back to john lennon and um this is a song that has harmonica right at the beginning and you can really hear by the way I, this one i listened to when i listened to the playback today i had earbuds in which i normally don't i'm normally listening in the truck or on uh on a regular conventional stereo but uh what i noticed in this song is i could really hear the flaws of um the 1960s recording process and the stereo mix with headphones on i'll talk about the stereo at the end but um it's not it's not real stereo it's not a real stereo mix okay it's a uh, key of e major 152 beats per minute and 4-4 time but that you could really hear the difference like when it would switch from verse to chorus um, so the, the chorus is eight bars and John Lennon singing da 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 I'm so sad and lonely baby take a chance on me that's the chorus eight bars of that and then the verse is six bars um, if you want someone to make you feel so fine and then the solo is a, a 12 bar I'm gonna assume that's George it sounds like George Harrison uh, no, I'm sorry. That's the. It's actually a harmonica solo. Um, so you hear the harmonica at the beginning and throughout the song, but then it's a 12-bar blues type um, harmonica solo. The song structure, back to a more familiar John Lennon one, is a chorus, chorus, verse, chorus, harmonica solo, verse, chorus. And that's Little Child. Track nine, Till There Was You, two minutes, 12 seconds. Uh, another Paul McCartney track. This is another, just a typical of this album, another boy band love song. Um, dot, 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 dot. Okay, it's uh, it's in the key of F major, 4-4 four, four time, 122 beats per minute. The verse is eight bars, um, and Paul is singing, There were bells on a hill, da 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 but I never heard them ringing. Da, 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 da. By, by the way, it's funny when the, when Paul and John, they both do it on this album, but when they sing, I never hear them at all, they do that, uh, they say at, at all, um, kind of like my grandparents used to. Um, it's a, uh, in the third verse, is he's, and then in the third verse he sings, there was love all around, but I never heard it singing. Okay. And then the bridge is eight bars and Paul singing the verse that starts, there are roses, beautiful. There are roses. <laughs> That's the bridge. So it's a verse, verse, bridge, verse, bridge, verse, outro. No chorus. This is more like um, a, one of the Please Please Me or Introducing the Beatles album songs. Track 10 is Hold Me Tight, 2 minutes 30 seconds, Paul McCartney. Um, the, by the way, the line there's a line that's really gross when Paul sings um, Making Love to Only You. I mean, I don't, I don't know how he got away with that, especially back in the 60s. Just real cringe. Um, the verse is 16 bars, and that's when he's singing Hold Me Tight, Let Me Go on Loving You, Tell Me I'm the Only One. And then the bridge is eight bars. You don't know what it means to hold you tight. Um, the song's in the key of C major, and it's 110 beats per minute and 4-4 four, four time. And the song structure is 
verse, verse, bridge, verse, bridge, verse, outro. So another um, no choruses in the song. Very much like a 50 song. Track 11, 11 is I Want to Be Your Man. 1 minute 59 seconds by Ringo. Um, but it's a, it is a Lennon and McCartney song that Ringo Starr sang. Okay. And um, this is a country song. To me, it sounds like country. Um, but with a like a poppy rhythm and beat. Okay. Uh, the chorus is eight bars and he's just singing, I want to be your man. Da, 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 da. I want to be your man. Da, 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 da. I mean, it, it does that for eight bars. And then the verse is 16 bars and it go, it starts. I want to be your lover, baby. Da, 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 da. And then the guitar solo is eight bars, a real twangy twangy one, like uh, like a country one. Um, and it's I, I'm gonna assume it's George Harrison. This song is in the key of E major and it's 188 beats per minute and it's in four four time. And a, um, I think they wrote this song for the Rolling Stones and the Rolling Stones Mick Jagger sang it and um, had a like a mild minor hit. Um, but the Beatles put it on one of their records and they. They gave it to Ringo so to make it to be like a less competitive song with the Rolling Stones. Uh, key of E major, 188 beats per minute, so a fast tempo. 4-4 four, four time, and it's a verse-chorus, verse-chorus guitar solo, and a verse-chorus outro. One of the more complex ones. Track 12, Not a Second Time, 2 minutes and 3 seconds. It's a John Lennon song, and it's one of the few songs on the album to really feature a piano on it. I'm going to assume it's John Lennon playing the piano. Um, it's in the key of G major or E minor. It has, by the way, for most of these, I um, I validated by looking at sheet music. Um, and sometimes I looked at uh, more than one different from different publishers just to make sure I got it right. But um, this one, I couldn't tell. It's... Um, it has both chords, G major and E minor, so it could be both. And it has one sharp. I could have gone the extra mile and identified which is the minor key that should have been a major key, but I didn't. I didn't. I neglected to do that. Um, uh, yeah, okay. It's 100 beats per minute in 4-4 four, four time. And the verse is 7 bars, which is weird, but... Um, you know, you know what? Lennon and McCartney were the masters of, like, figuring out what... Um, where the verse or chorus should end and how it should fit in with the rest of the song. So it just, it actually does feel right. Even though it doesn't feel right when you're counting it, it feels right that it's seven bars when you listen to it. And the verse is when John Lennon is singing, You Know You Make Me Cry. That's how the verse goes. And then the chorus is eight bars. Uh, about it's kind of got an abrupt uh and it's um you're giving me the same old line i'm wondering why that's how the line that's how the chorus goes um the instrumental is uh, eight bars and it's like a the piano is featured so it's the piano is featured throughout the song you can hear it but it's also like the main groove that's going on in the instrumental part i don't know if i would call it a, a piano solo but it's like the it's definitely carrying the melody, okay? It's a verse, verse, chorus, instrumental, that piano part, and then verse, verse, chorus, outro. And John's, you know, John's just keeping it real simple here. All right, and that's the album. That's the last song on the album. Now, uh, in summary, um, the song structures here are just one more step more complex than Please Please Me or Introducing the Beatles. Um... When the Beatles were just, what they were doing in 63, they were just using the classic song structure template of verse, verse, bridge, verse, and repeat or some variation of it that their idols used. And their idols were coming from the 50s, so like Carl Perkins and um, um, Elvis and uh, Little Richard, these guys. They were, that's what they were doing on the first record. And they're just mimicking their idols. On Meet the Beatles, they 
added choruses and compound song structure with verse, chorus, and bridges in the mix. So you get you get much more variation on song structure. And so there's a level of additional complexity on Meet the Beatles that you won't get from introducing the Beatles or a release that came out in 1965, which is the um, Capitol Records called the early, what is it? The early, I think it's called the early Beatles. <laughs> they didn't have like really clever um, titles for their records, Capitol Records. Um, In addition, in 2003, the album was ranked at number 55 on the Rolling Stones' 500 Greatest Albums of All Time list. It was re-ranked at number 53 on the 2012 list. Um, so it went up, and then it was re-ranked at 197 in 2020 when... Uh, by the way, my source is Wikipedia. Um... It was controversial. Do you guys remember the Rolling Stones really botched it? I mean, they they just went. I don't know how you describe it. I don't want to offend anyone, but did they go woke or um whatever? Whatever. Um, it's the Rolling Stone. Take it, take it or leave it. I w You know what? Honestly, I went to look it up on progarchives.com because there is a Beatles, there is a Beatles discography at progarchives.com. This version, um. It only had like a handful of reviews, like 33 or 53. You know, that to me, that's not a fair sample size. So I, I'm not, I didn't even make note of what the rating was. Um, Cause it's not fair. If I would have saw it at 101 or more, I would have, I would have mentioned it here, but um, you know, you can go read the reviews if you want. Now let's talk about, uh, let's get into it. This, um, the stereo versus mono. Okay. Um, the first 12 songs on this CD, by the way, they made, this is cool. They made these look like a record. It looks like a vinyl, right? This is a CD. The first 12 songs are the songs in order, but it's the stereo version, but it's not the stereo version that George Martin cut, that he mastered and cut in London at Abbey Road Studios. Excuse me. What the Beatles did um, in the old days they would do the mono mix first because that was the one that got played. That's the one that was sold and sold the most and got played. And the stereo mix was almost like an afterthought. So George Martin would do the mono first, make sure it was perfect, and then do the stereo. Well, um, they never sent the... In most cases, they didn't send the, send the stereo mixes over to Capitol Records in the United States. So... Um, this executive at Capitol Rector, Records named Dexter, he got this idea. Um, I th he got this idea. Let's re let's just remix it. Let's take the mono and um, on one speaker. Let's turn down the treble all the way and turn the bass up all the the other way. And in the other channel, let's do the opposite. Let's turn the bass all the way down and the treble all the way up. And then they put a little uh, delay on one of them. And so there's like a simulated stereo mix. It's not a true um, it's not a true stereo mix that you would get if you bought a modern day mix or remaster of the Beatles. Okay. So the first 12 songs that play are the stereo Dexter mixes. That's what I call them. And then the next 12 is the original mono tracks. Um, depending on what you're listening to, if you got headphones or earbuds on or a stereo, um, you'll prefer one over the other. I, I thought the stereo mixes were fine with earbuds on. When, when I'm in my truck, they sound weird, echoey and reverby and, um, they got a weird, they got a weird feel to it. Uh, so yeah, so that's that. So that's why there's 24 tracks and not just 12. Um, and you know, well, and whatever, most of the time I just, I just listen to the stereo. But it's, um, I don't find myself listening to this a lot anymore, but um, when I got them, that's what I was doing. Um, yeah, and so what else? What else in summary? If you, I mean, if you don't like the Beatles and specifically meet the Beatles, then you're missing out. You know, it's not my problem. You missed the boat or something. Um, 
It's easy to listen to. It's catchy. It makes me happy for the most part. Like, um, I, two of my favorite bands are Porcupine Tree, Steve Wilson, and then Pink Floyd. And it doesn't make me happy. <laughs> but this does. I mean, this so this this makes me happy. Okay? And I don't listen to it a lot, and I never did, but I but I am a Beatle maniac, and um, I endorse it. So uh, that's, that's my review of Meet the Beatles. Thanks for listening. Um, next on the channel, we'll do Clockwork Orange. Uh, <laughs> Clockwork Orange. <laughs> next on the channel, we're going to do Clockwork Angels by Rush, which came out in 2012. And then after that, sometime next week, uh, we'll do the first Yes album from 1969. All right. Go have a, a genuine draft. Coach Plow Guy out.